What's up guys, it's me Lego Paradise here and today I'm going to review this very special issue of Blocks Magazine which includes my interview on my working waterfall Lego Ideas project. So that's super exciting and I can't wait to show you it. But first I'd like to show you some of the other awesome things inside this magazine. So let's open it up and take a look inside. The first page is just the intro page and it gives you a short description of what's inside this issue of Blocks Magazine, as well as a quick bio of each of the staff writers, as well as all of the contributors to Blocks. As we get to the next page, this is the table of contents, and this gives you a real overview of everything inside the magazine. Obviously, I won't cover every single thing in this issue, I'll just show you some of my favourite things in this magazine. And there's the hint of my working waterfall interview on the page 90. So we'll get to that a little bit later on in this review. And then you can see some of the other things that they cover in this issue. Generally, that is split into Lego news and discussions with the ideas showcases and interviews, as well as some features on new sets and themes, lots of reviews of all of the latest Lego sets, as well as some building techniques and mocks, which is one of my personal favourite sections of this magazine. So let's skip ahead to the next section, which is recent LEGO news. And here is an article about the clone brands that LEGO has to deal with from places like China. So here's an example of one of the clone sets, and it talks about how recently LEGO has won a case against one of these big companies that manufactures these counterfeit sets. And it's got some interesting facts about some of the sets which they've been copying, such as Nexo Knights and Ninjago. And what's surprising is a lot of these counterfeit companies are actually protected by their country's copyright laws, even though they are just ripping off actual Lego sets. Then over on the other page is a preview of one of the upcoming free giveaways on lego.com, as well as this column section on the side, which is a very cool little news in brief. I'm actually quite impressed by the variety of news in this section, even though I consider myself quite up to date with LEGO news, since I read sites like Brickset and some of the other LEGO blogs, I still learn something new. Another thing I like is that they don't just focus on one particular area of the world, they cover worldwide LEGO related news, which is definitely a bonus. There's also this page which has a top 10 LEGO sports crossover sets, and that's quite interesting to read through. And this is another interesting article which I'd like to highlight. This is a LEGO DNA sequencer which a team of scientists have constructed. And this works similar to a real life DNA sequencer, well a lot simplified, but I thought it was a cool concept using LEGO Mindstorms. And from these pictures, you can see how it basically scans a whole line of Lego bricks representing DNA, and that puts them through a custom program system which decodes the Lego DNA. And that basically teaches people about the type of work that these scientists do. And I thought that was a very cool spotlight on that build. There's also a look at a Canadian Lego users group, and you can see some of the really cool builds which they produce and it talks about how they collaborate together with the different members in their LEGO users group. This is another article which really stood out to me, because as you can see it covers some of the largest LEGO pieces, which include some really specialised moulds, and it talks about how even though they only appeared in one or two sets, it's likely that LEGO actually had greater ambitions for these pieces, and was planning on including them in a few more sets. So for example with that Aqua Zone blue and yellow door piece, the writer guesses that that was intended to be used in some sort of Lego space theme, although that never came into production, but it's still interesting seeing all these very unusual and unique pieces. And I just found it interesting how it's true how some of these pieces only ever appeared in one or maybe two sets, even though Lego must have spent lots of time and money designing custom moulds for each of these parts. So you can already start to see the wide variety of different topics that Blocks Magazine covers. This one is about how the editor of the magazine is having trouble storing all of his new LEGO sets as his collection keeps on growing, and that's definitely a problem I can relate to. 
Then you also have one of the larger features. This time it's about Lego's new bracelet theme, dots. And that there's actually some really interesting pieces in this. I'm very excited to get a whole bunch of those little tiles since they're super useful for mocks as well as the brand new rubber bracelet pieces. I'm sure there's got to be a really interesting working Lego machine that can be created with the rubber bracelet pieces. And this article also talks about how they collaborated with this artist to design the dots theme and also build this very unusual building which they've set up to promote this new theme. Next up we have some reviews of the latest Lego sets such as the newest modular building as well as the full lineup of Ninjago sets which are this very cool cyberpunk theme which is very fitting for this year. These are all very fair and very high quality reviews which look at both the pros and the cons for each set and you also have the very nice high quality printing on all of the images. So now we're over halfway through and this is an especially interesting bit. Every issue Blocks covers a different decade of Lego history and this time it's the 2000s which is when Lego was facing its worst financial trouble. Basically that was because of their focus away from actual Lego bricks which was causing them to lose hundreds of millions of dollars a year. That was until they hired a new CEO seen on the left in the photo who pretty much turned the company around by focusing on sets with stories which you still see with a lot of Lego themes today. And a really cool fact, back when I went on the Lego Inside Tour I actually met this guy who was still the CEO at the time and this is how I got one of these super rare business card minifigures. You can see the similarity between the real person and the minifigure and I thought that's just a cool fact to share that I actually met the CEO of Lego at the time. So now we get to the back of the magazine. This is quite cool. It's a mod guide for if you own the Imperial Star Destroyer. These are instructions to modify the set and add an interior. And while I don't personally own that set, I'm sure it's a very good guide for customizing your own Lego Star Destroyer. And they focus on something different every few issues of Blocks magazine. You also have some building techniques here for some wall lights and different styles of lanterns that you can clip to walls. As well as a look at some standalone parts and some examples of how they can be used in your Lego creations. And now we come up to one of the best pages in this magazine which is my interview on my working Lego waterfall. I'm super excited to see this in print because this is my first interview in a magazine like this and it's so fantastic actually getting to see this in real life. It's a very interesting read and I talk about some of the inspiration for my waterfall as well as the design process and why I think my working Lego waterfall is so successful on Lego ideas. You can pause the video if you want to have a read of this interview but I'd highly recommend purchasing the actual physical magazine because there's just so much other stuff which I haven't even shown you in this review. It's just so full of all sorts of interesting Lego stories and articles, over a hundred pages in fact and as you've seen in this video it's just a very good quality magazine overall. There's a link to their website where you can get it from in the description. They also offer subscriptions and deliveries so definitely check out their website in the link below. This issue will be on sale from the 5th of March. And if you're in the UK you can also find blocks in your local newsagents such as WH Smith's. I've also reviewed the full set of custom printed blocks magazine cover tiles so you can check that video out as well. There are also some very high quality Lego pieces. And let me know what you think of this review in the comments. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Lego videos. A big thank you to Blocks Magazine for sending me a copy and I also appreciate all of my supporters on Patreon. I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.